I was really impressed that World Press took this opportunity to rethink the structure and we needed to address this problem of um, getting more regional representation and that really required the reformatting of how entrants were are gathered and encouraged in the first place. I think that people would be in maybe in the coming years also very much encouraged to submit also work that is done locally. Because the model of photojournalism today has completely changed. It's much, it's much more local now than it used to be. In this photo we see an orange dress hanging on a cross in perfect evening light as the sun sets on the day and it's very symbolic of the mass graves that were discovered last summer at various sites across Canada and is a haunting image of that reckoning we're coming to with our own history. It reveals also the role of the church and how culture of First Nation people have been violently erased. It's a global message. It's a kind of image that sears itself into your memory. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of image that almost inspires a sensory um, a reaction. You know, uh, I could almost hear the, the quietness in, in that photograph. I want there to be some awareness um, to admit that the this history exists in our past and recognition of that terrible event. It will be the only way for us to repair is to honor those who were taken. <laughs> First of all, I was looking for really strong images, but I was also looking for stories that went deeper into the issues that they were about. Execution of um, original presentation of style. The series of really intimate, dignified, and very caring portraits of people who work in the meatpacking district in Ohio, in America. Uh, the series portrays them really as they are, as opposed to having any visual elements that connotes them with the occupation that they are usually associated with. It really shows them as in their homes, it shows them as human beings. It doesn't show them as workers. It shows them as somebody's mother, somebody's father, somebody's brother. And I think for that reason, this series is really, really strong and powerful. Long-term projects provide a space uh, for a photographer to um, really delve deeper into the issues that are trying to portray, they're trying to photograph, and uh, stories that portrayed issues from a different perspective. Uh, well, for me, it was a very intelligent and very insightful way of chronicling the course of events unfolding and leading up to a terrifying and uh, climatic resolution, which was the American insurrection of January 6. Uh, this project in many ways kind of blurs the lines between the real and the imaginary, and, and that's the poignancy of it. The open format category was new this year and our winner was um, an entry from Mexico and it traces the history and importance of the poppy on the indigenous community that the photographer is from. So the photographer had taken the original story, punctured holes in, backlit it, re-photographed it, toned it to amplify the narrative of the complex relationship between the poppy and the indigenous community. It's life-sustaining for them, but it's also illegal and brings a lot of violence. So that duality of experience is really captured in this additional layer. It's been really interesting to have these discussions around critical thinking about um, photography and the issues that we're covering today and how is it relevant 
the jury was moving as a single person. So we were really at some point really gravitating towards like the, the global winners and almost unanimously in a way. I feel very honored to have been part of this year's jury, especially on this sort of big remaking year um, and having the opportunity to be a regional chair and bring those stories from my community and what I know are some of the important things that we're grappling with this year um, and see that with those other stories, those gems that we found from around the world was a real honor.